to the Zod. We're waiting for a couple folks to trickle in here. But I think we'll go ahead and get started. Just a reminder, as we get started, that the webinar is being recorded. And we'll post that on our YouTube page shortly, as well as on azodfunds.com. Okay, I think we've reached a quorum. Welcome to today's presentation on exercising your rights as an investor. I'm Josh Brockwell, Investment Communications Director here at Azad. Thanks for joining us. We're here today to talk to you about shareholder advocacy. Now that means different things to different people, but at its core, it's about leveraging the power of owning stock in publicly traded companies to make environmental, social, or governance changes at a company from within as owners. So at Azad, we think this is an important part of our mandate, specifically as it relates to the promotion of ethical business conduct. Today, our plan is to show you how one important part of advocacy, filing shareholder resolutions that is, takes place along with how it can maybe, just maybe, help make the world a better place to live and to invest. And we'll go ahead and give you a few background points on Azad just so you know where we're coming from. Brief mention about the Azad philosophy. Azad's mission focuses on generating competitive, long-term financial returns while using investment capital to promote a sustainable economy and a positive social impact. Our vision is a world in which investment capital helps to build a sustainable and equitable economy. And at this point, let me call your attention to the membership affiliations arrayed at the bottom of the slide on your screen. We owe a lot of support, um, or help, I should say, to the support of the organizations that we belong to. Uh, you'll see those, a few of those at the bottom of your screen. I'll specifically mention US CIF, which is the Forum for Sustainable and Responsible Investment and ICCR, the Interface Center on Corporate Responsibility. Um, with regard to filing shareholder resolutions, which is the bulk of our presentation today, ICCR in particular has been a really, really valuable resource, and we thank them for, for their contributions and, and all their support. So moving right along, let's get to the meat of today's presentation. Our main topic for today, shareholder activism. For more on that, I'm going to now turn it over to my colleague, co-presenter today, Amina Rubin. Thank you, Josh. So the goal of shareholder activism is to influence the actions and policies of companies. And there are a number of ways for shareholders to communicate with corporations. The most basic one is voting proxies. Owning stocks gives you the right to vote on a co company's proxy ballot, just as citizenship gives you the right to vote in elections. And in both cases, uh, we could argue that voting is not just a right, but a responsibility. So anyone who owns stocks can vote proxies. Another level of communicating with corporations is to send an investor letter with the goal of engaging in dialogue with the company on a particular issue. To increase their impact, investor letters may be jointly signed by many institutions that manage assets. And if it's unlikely that the company will be willing to engage in dialogue, or if uh, dialogue has been tried and been unsuccessful, the situation may call for filing a shareholder resolution, which brings us to the main focus of this webinar. So let's take a closer look at shareholder resolutions. And as we do that, as we transition, um, thank you, Mina. I, I will point out, and I, I could have mentioned this at the top of the webinar today, we're, we're doing this webinar um, in part because although we've been filing um, resolutions for a little while now, uh, it's, it's taken um, a bit of time to get up and running, to get up to speed. There was a learning curve, um, somewhat steep at times. We've been obviously voting proxies for a while. I mean, it just mentioned that process. Uh, but this presentation is sort of a 101 for those who are uh, not yet in the know, and it's kind of for us a wish list or things that would have been nice to know um, that we sort of picked up along the way, kind of in a in a condensed half-hour presentation. And also there's an opportunity for you to ask uh, questions, and I'll, I'll point out that uh, GoToWebinar has a, a Q&A box uh, for you to do just that. So hopefully making it a little more interactive, which will, I think, benefit you guys and, and, uh, and hopefully um, 
we'll be able to, to respond to those questions. So moving on, shareholder resolutions. One common way to take action for the public good as a shareholder is to propose those resolutions to company management to be brought to a vote at the company's next annual general meeting. Uh, annual general meeting, the acronym is AGM. You'll probably hear that a couple times throughout today's presentation. A successful proposal or resolution, and we'll use those terms interchangeably today, may lead to a dialogue that addresses the concerns raised in the resolution. Recent corporate history has made clear that institutional investors like mutual funds or other organized groups of investors who share a perspective often carry significant weight. It's the whole strength in numbers idea. According to the U.S. Forum for Sustainable and Responsible Investment, several major corporations have actually changed their environmental and workplace policies in response to, to that type of shareholder pressure. Now, Azad has selected the issues on your screen as a, as a focus for our shareholder activism efforts. And of course, you can choose whatever issues matter to you. Today, we're focused on the, the form and the process of making those issues known to company management. So let's take a look at the reasons for filing shareholder resolutions. As shareholders, individuals and institutions have the right to submit shareholder resolutions on issues that concern us. Resolutions will appear on a company's proxy statement, and all shareholders can vote on them at the company's annual general meeting or by proxy. And because they're public, resolutions can be an effective catalyst for change within a corporation. Most companies want to project a positive image at their annual meetings, and they therefore hope to avoid having shareholder resolutions on controversial or negative issues on their proxy statements or being read aloud at their meetings. So filing a resolution can help draw the attention of company management to your issue. And even if they don't challenge or respond to the resolution before the AGM, they have to add it to their proxy ballots for all shareholders which, by the way, they print and mail at their own expense. Now, if you're new to filing shareholder proposals, don't think that you have to get a majority vote to have an impact. The SEC has set thresholds for how much support a resolution has to get in order to proceed. If it gets at least 3% of the shares voted in the first year that it's introduced, it can then be resubmitted the next year. In the second year, it has to relieve, receive at least 6%. And for any years after that, it needs to receive at least 10% of the vote each year in order to be refiled. So we'd hope that a company would make some effort to resolve an issue that keeps getting that level of support from its shareholders. But what you may find is that you can get companies' attention at even lower levels of support. Moving right along, educating other investors. Now, if your resolution makes it to the proxy ballot, other investors will become aware of the issue. The company knows this, and they may consider it problematic for other shareholders to see that they're being questioned on, on an issue. And this type of added pressure may make them more willing to consider a proposal. And let me also add here that we're approaching this as partners, as stakeholders in a company, not, not as adversaries, which is an important point of distinction. So moving right along, bringing public pressure to bear. Next slide. So along the same lines, public pressure and media attention can also make management more willing to consider a shareholder proposal in order to avoid being publicly associated with the bad stuff, right? Things like human rights violations, environmental destruction, or corporate irresponsibility. Publicizing a shareholder resolution through media outreach or on social media can increase that, that type of pressure. Mina. Now, let's take a look at uh, the details of filing a resolution. In order to file a shareholder resolution, you have to hold at least $2,000 worth of the company's stock continuously for one year before filing, and you must pledge to continue to hold that amount through the date of the company's annual general meeting. You can only file one resolution per company with your shares, but you can file resolutions with as many companies as you like during a given filing season. So an individual who owns more than $2,000 worth of stock in, for example, Apple, Microsoft, and Amazon could file one resolution with each company in a given year, but not three resolutions with Apple. However, asset management firms could potentially file 
more than one resolution with one company by using stocks owned by different clients, of course, with those clients' approval. I mean, let me stop you there. As I mentioned, we have an ongoing dialogue with our participants today, and so we have a question here about voting shares, and this is an individual who has a retirement account in mutual funds. The question is, how can I vote my shares? You want to take that since it's germane to the, the topic we're on right now? Sure. Uh, so mutual, a uh, person who owns uh, shares in a mutual fund owns a share of the fund. They're not owning the stocks directly. So the mutual fund company, uh, which does own those stocks, will vote proxies on behalf of, of the individual. Um, so if you want to find out how your mutual fund company is voting proxies, if you're concerned about uh, the impact of, of your investment. Um, we encourage you to find out um, their proxy voting guidelines. You can probably find it on their website um, for, for Azad Funds investors. That's, uh, you can find it on azadfunds.com. Um, and, and if you don't find it, give them a call and ask them about it. And it's a good opportunity to let them know that you care about impact investing and that you're paying attention to what they're doing with your votes. All right, great. Let's talk about the filing packet now. So there are three pieces to every shareholder resolution filing packet. The cover letter in which the filer states their concerns, the resolution that is being submitted for inclusion on the proxy voting materials, as well as a verification of the filer's stock ownership so that the company knows they are entitled to file the proposal. Companies set their own filing deadlines for shareholder resolutions. It's generally about six months before the next uh, AGM, but you should just check and, and be aware of, of when the filing deadline is for each company. So now we'll show you an example of a shareholder filing packet that Azad recently delivered to Chevron, the energy company. In December of 2016, Azad and the Ursuline Sisters of Tildonk, which is a Catholic international religious congregation, filed the first shareholder resolution focused on the persecuted Burmese Rohingya minority. It so happens that Chevron does business in Burma or Myanmar. In that resolution, we called on Chevron to, ev to evaluate a policy of not doing business with governments believed to be engaged in genocide or crimes against humanity. We believe that's a reasonable request. This, by the way, is the first time a shareholder resolution focused on that Rohingya minority has been submitted to a U.S. corporation. Now, there are several ways um, that a company may respond to the filing of a resolution. If the company is interested in resolving the issue without letting it come to a vote, they might reach out to the lead filer about addressing the concern. And the lead filer could choose to withdraw the resolution on behalf of all the co-filers if they believe there's a good chance to resolve the issue. Um, now, lead filers and co-filers should uh, agree b beforehand what they would be willing to accept in order to withdraw the resolution. The co-filers will give the lead filer um, the right or permission to withdraw the, the proposal on their behalf if certain conditions are met. So it's a good idea for all the filers together to be on the same page with that. So the company could also choose to challenge the resolution with the SEC. And there are a number of reasons it can base its challenge on, including procedural mistakes. Um, so be careful, and uh, it's a good idea to ask advice from other people who have filed resolutions before. It also wouldn't hurt to read the SEC rule, 14A8, which is somewhat dense but also really instructive, and it's sort of your guidebook for how to, to approach the process. So there are the two uh, ways the SEC could decide if it's challenged formally with them. They could decide to omit your resolution if it agrees with the company's arguments against it. For example, if the proposal asks the company to change something that's part of its everyday business, such as selling a particular kind of product. And if the resolution is omitted, then it can't be refiled again for three years. If the SEC approves the proposal, it will appear in the company's proxy materials and be voted on at the company's annual general meeting. So let's talk about the AGM, moving right along. Shareholder resolutions are voted on at the company's annual general meeting, most of which are held in the spring each year. So we're right in the, in the thick of it at this point as this webinar is being recorded. After the annual meeting, companies have to report the votes that are cast to the SEC. And let me mention here as well that 
a representative of the filers has to attend the company's AGM to formally move the resolution by, by reading a statement of some sort. Then the vote takes place and the votes are tallied, reported to the SEC. And companies can count, by the way, votes in different ways. And they disclose to you how they count those votes in their proxy materials. So how shareholder votes are counted is a complicated topic and worthy maybe of another webinar. But for simplicity's sake, suffice it to say that you, you need to know that an abstain vote may be counted as a vote with management and therefore against the proposal. A shareholder not voting could also count for management. So pay attention. We are approaching the end of the webinar and we wanted to share with you a sampling of some of the recent shareholder advocacy initiatives that Azad has either joined uh, in coalition or led uh, recently. So these include asking Exxon to disclose its lobbying expenditures, and that was specifically related to reports that they had been funding climate change denial. Uh, we also uh, joined a group asking Exxon to commit to not source oil from the D Dakota Access Pipeline project. Uh, included asking Chevron to explore the feasibility of not having a pol of having a policy to not do business with governments complicit in genocide, which Josh just mentioned a minute ago. Asking the pharmaceutical companies Merck and Gilead to disclose their reasons for raising their drug prices significantly, and uh, asking Nestle to pressure one of its suppliers to implement safety protocols. Um, at a factory in Bangladesh after that supplier had a, an explosion in, in one of their factories. So I'll also add here that uh, the, the list isn't exhaustive. Um, there's more information on our website at Um But hopefully what you can take away from this uh, sampling of initiatives and efforts is that we've been busy trying to put um, assets to, to good use and we encourage others to do that. And whether you've already started that process and are looking to enhance and become a more robust filer of shareholder resolutions, or if you're just getting started, feel free to ask us questions, reach out to those who are involved, and, and make a difference. And that, that brings us to the empowerment slide, which is on your screen now. So there are lots of ways that, that people can use their investment dollars to do good in the world. And we think this is an important one. As we conclude, though, we want you to take a minute to think about how you as an individual or a financial advisor, I know there's some on the, on the call as well, are using your investments. And remember that firms that manage your assets can file resolutions and vote proxies in your name. So educate yourself about their voting policies and find out if you like what they're doing. Finally, understand that there's a world of good being done out there in the field of socially responsible investing, but much more can happen with your active involvement so let's get out there and change the world for the better. That uh, will bring us to the question and answer portion of today's presentation. If you have a question, go ahead and open that dialog box on the GoToWebinar panel and send it our way. I think we have a few coming in here. All right, starting out, we have a question about the voting thresholds. It says here, I mean, getting 3% of the vote sounds like a lot. How likely are you to actually get that much? It, I mean, 3% is a lot when you think about the number of people um, that, that you would need to have learn about your issue. Fortunately, there are uh, companies and organizations dedicated to helping um, increase the vote um, or, or raise awareness, especially for, think about some of the big pension funds. They can have a really big impact because they may be voting on behalf of large numbers of people. So uh, they're, the, the big ones are, are Glass-Lewis and ISS, and you can, um, if someone who has filed a, pro, a shareholder proposal can write something called a proxy memo, um, which outlines their issue, uh, the argument responding to the way management may have been arguing against it, and asking those companies to recommend a vote for your proposal. And, and if they would choose to, to recommend a vote for your proposal, that can have a, a big impact and, and easily get you over 3%. So there's also, I should mention, I, I 
don't know that you touched on it just now, the exempt solicitation, which you can file through the SEC. That's another, that's another option uh, worth, worth looking at. It's uh, a little bit more of an effort in terms of the actual filing, but not a whole lot. There may be some notarization required uh, submitting through a, through a website, but that actually allows you to sort of state the case in an official capacity as a shareholder. And we're happy to talk more about that offline. We're actually going through that process with, uh, with one or two of our, our advocacy initiatives right now. So other questions coming through? We have one here on, uh, we, don't, we don't offer no, legal advice, uh, uh, obviously, at Azad, but there is a question about filing shareholder resolutions and being targeted by lawsuits. The, the, about, the question is asking, um, is, it com or is, there, is it common for people who file shareholder resolutions to be targeted by lawsuits, we can imagine, by the company? Well, I can tell you that in terms of our experience and, and the collective experience of other organizations, it, it, and I'm not speaking for them, it's just I've, we've done a lot of learning over the last several months on this front. This is your right as a shareholder, and there's absolutely nothing wrong with, with exercising that. In fact, it's a shame that more people don't. Arguably, in today's day and age, it would be all the more imperative to do that. If you take a look at that rule I mentioned, the SEC Rule 14A8, on shareholder proposals, you'll sort of see the, the process. It's a, it's a guidebook for you. Companies are, are typically cordial, if, if not downright receptive, to the, to the request that you make. Um, and in terms of the dialogue back and forth, there's, there's, there's a lot of give and take depending on the company. Some may be rather stone-faced and, and begrudgingly include your resolution on the proxy materials if it meets um, the requirements and passes muster with the SEC, provided they go the route of challenging it. That's oftentimes the, the only, I wouldn't even call it hostile, quote unquote, approach that companies might take, but uh, clearly they, they have a, a PR, public relations interest in trying to put the best face of their company forward and resolutions that sort of sully their good name or have the appearance of sullying their good name um, will, will be vigorously challenged and, and understandably so. Sometimes there's just not a meeting of the minds and, and they'll have to go ahead and put it on the resolution um, without, without a dialogue and uh, consent. But that's, that's okay and my point is that that's completely uh, legitimate from a regulatory perspective. So take a look, um, take a look at the SEC website. I think you'll, you'll be positively and pleasantly surprised by the, by the rights afforded to you as, as a shareholder. And again, I mentioned before that we're not interested in adversarial relationships at Azad. You know, we approach these relationships as partners, stakeholders, and we ultimately want good. And we think corporations uh, want the same. They're competing definitions of the good and we're just trying to come to a, to a positive middle ground. So I think we were trying to peg this at 30 minutes for, for the webinar, we're pretty close right there. If there are any other last minute questions coming through, take a look. I think we're good. Of course we're available offline to answer any technical or more detailed questions that you might have. We'll go ahead and wrap up today's presentation. Thanks, everybody, for your time, for, for spending part of your afternoon with us. Just a reminder to go ahead and uh, read the information on your screen right now and also visit our website at oddfunds.com. While you're there, you can also sign up to receive our, our monthly e-newsletter to get more information about our products and services. Finally, be sure to follow us on Twitter. The handle is at oddfunds and like our Facebook page, which is facebook.com slash oddfunds. Also, as I mentioned at the top of the broadcast, let me note that a recorded version of this presentation is going to be posted uh, shortly to our YouTube channel, which is youtube.com slash azodfunds, as well as to our website. So be sure to take a look, and thank you for your time. Thank you, Amina, for your participation. Thank you. And have a great afternoon, everyone.